Okay, people, so we have just now finished watching Still Up, right? Episode 8 will be dropping shortly, so I wanted to give you the overall thoughts, right? Now, the series is, um, it's created by uh, John Addis, um, well, no, Steve Burge, Burge? Yeah, Steve Burge and Natalie Walter. John Addis directs the episodes. It's written by Steve Burge, Natalie Walter, and Bryce Hart. Right, the series is then produced by Arabella McGowan, um, executive produced by Paul Scheslinger and Philip Clark. Right, it's associate produced by um, Burge and Walter, and line produced by Stephen Abrahams. Joel Cadbury handles the music. Right, Frank Madone cinematography. It's edited by Richard Ketteridge and Andy Kinnear. Lauren Evans handled the casting. Production design is Simon Walker. Art direction is Philippa Mumford and Rebecca Salter. Set decoration is Mandy Sorin. Um, costume design, Leona Hatred and Serena Kennedy Bell. All right, hair and makeup, Jute Florentino, Lisa Kennedy, and Annabella Mc McCain. McMahon, even. Right, so our stars. We have got Lisa, played by Antonia Thomas. Danny, played by Craig Roberts. Lisa's boyfriend, Veggie, played by Blake Harrison. Danny's neighbours, Catman, is played by Rich Fulcher. Adam is played by Luke Featherston. You've got Poppy, who is Lisa's daughter, played by Brun Bronte Smith. There's Amy, right, a love interest of Danny's, played by Louise Chimbea. Uh, we've got Tyler, played by Albert Magishi. Um, Tony, the taxi driver, Steve Oren. Uh, there's Lena, played by Ivana Besic. Nikki, played by Kathy Murphy. Um, Angela, played by Joe Martin. Kate, played by... Alice Bailey Johnson, um, Anne, right, which is Lisa's mum, I believe, I play by Jacqueline Botswan, um, a young version of Lisa is played by Jasmine Dooley, Anne M, played by Linda Hargreaves, uh, Donna, played by Claire Carpenter, um, Jane, played by Letty Butler, Bob, Glenn Davis, Chloe, or played by Daisy Head, right? Um, then there is Milo, played by Charlie DeMello. I think we've hit most of the, the main people. There's a load of people. It's eight episodes, people, you know what I mean? But I think that's a, a lot of the main ones, right? And basically, an impulsive and free-spirited aspiring illustrator who questions over her daughter's future start keeping her up at night and the society, socially anxious yet gifted journalist, Danny. Right? We are following their adventures. So as we left it in episode one, this was very promising. Right, it was a lot of fun. There was some good chemistry to be had between our cast, you know, and um, it was just looking where this would go because I think there was some obvious things that we were seeing, right? The do they, don't they, you know, that kind of thing. And the story does progress nicely, right? We get plenty of really funny you know what I mean, nice moments, right, like in episode two, the dress, 
the whole dress situation on the bus was just ridiculous. It was ridiculous and funny. It was very far-fetched, right? You just think, would someone really do that with their clothes? But it, it was fine. It worked. It was fun, right? Danny sending the picture to Amy was, uh, it was funny. You kind of think, how would you mistakenly do that? Right? One's via an app, a certain app. One's through the message. Like, how? But it was funny. You know? So that was good. Right? The the whole date situation was, um, you know what I mean? That, that was like, what? <laughs> what is going on? What is going on? And the ending with the, the, the whole, well, the whole nose, right? The whole nose situation. And then the uh, the finger was just like, <laughs> oh my gosh! But there is the question that is posed during that question, that episode: What would you rather live without, a chin or knees? You know what I mean? I was like, what would you? I, a chin or knees? I think probably, if you think about it, the chin is more noticeable, right? Having no knees, you're wearing trousers, so people aren't probably going to notice that as much, right? But no chin, people would be like, yo, what up with, you know, where's the chin? You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I, I think you have to live without knees, right? I mean, what do you think? Um Episode four was the sleep clinic situation, which had some, you know, amusing moments. But I think it really took a turn with episode five, Veggie Veggie Bing Bong, right? When Lisa and Veg go on a camping trip, but Veg has invited his parents. And if you think veg is weird, we get to see <laughs> where he came from. Well, I mean, his dad's his stepdad, but I think he was around from a very young age. But his mum is crazy. They're all loons. And the whole game, veggie, veggie, that like makes no sense. But you are wasting a lot of ham. A lot of ham. <laughs> but at the end of that episode, we get a bit of a bombshell. You know what I mean? Veggie's mum drops some news, which is just like, <sighs> you wonder how all this play into our, our remaining episodes. All right, episode six is the road trip. All right, so Lisa's on a stag do, not a stag, a hen, hen, right? And uh, gets very drunk, right? She's trying to distract herself from potentially um, some information. So she goes on this thing, gets drunk, also gets pretty high, right? So we just see her escapades around London out of her face, which, uh, yeah, that wasn't bad. I think one of the weirdest moments of that episode was it looked like Danny makes porridge with cold milk. I'm just, th that makes no sense to me. Like, what the fuck is that? How are you making porridge with cold milk? What nonsense. But, I mean, the ventriloquist puppet. Oh dear, the whole laundrette thing, right? That was uh, uh yeah, that this was an adventure. But we then see because I think the big thing about the series is right, Danny doesn't leave his flat. Lisa, we see her out and about every now and again, but Danny doesn't leave. So this episode really did stir things up a little. And especially then at the end with the whole bus stop situation, you know, because you're like, oh, what could happen? And we definitely learned what would happen in the next episode, the horse, right? 
So it's meant to be eight days after episode six. And um, yes, a few things are going on, right? I mean, there's some good chemistry with Amy and Danny. Like, all the characters in this series are good, right? And played very well. It's got a great cast. A great cast. But Amy, like, the whole finger in the teacup thing was uh, very, very amusing. And it's like, just their interaction was very sweet, right? Like, there's some really nice, heartwarming, sweet moments in this series. And so I think even though you can kind of see where it's going, there's some great little moments. And, you yeah, know, we learned something in episode seven. Sea otters have pockets under their armpits. And did you know that? Because I did not, right? And episode eight, the wedding. Man, and so this episode, we find out what went down, right? We we find out why Danny is in his flat and doesn't want to leave, right? We find out what happened with his ex, Chloe, and how Lisa and Danny actually met, right? So, I mean, the whole Danny-Chloe thing is just... Oh, it is, it's, it's just horrific, right? But it does really show you who Danny is, right? Someone that is caught up, I feel, in the moment, right? And wanting for a certain situation to be. So completely oblivious to the pretty clear signs that are going on. But yeah, that was just, it's not good. That was not good. That was not good at all, right? And yeah, we see Lisa's dating profile get, you know, set up. Her meet, like how her and Veg connected. But like all of that becomes clear. So it's a... You know, all of that is interesting, seeing that past. And then the way the episode ends, like, it's kind of sweet, but it does, like, you wonder where it's going to go from there, right? Because you feel certain declarations have been made, right? The positions are clear. But you also kind of think it would be too predictable for it to actually go in a certain direction, right? So I think when first watching this, and because Antonio as well was in it, you, you do draw the comparisons to Lubsick, a.k.a. Scrotal, Oh, scrotal therapy? Scrotal recall. Oh, that's it. Yes, yeah, scrotal recall. The original name of Lovesy. Right? There's definitely those things that you can look at and you think, man, there is this similarity between the shows, right? And in that one, there's a will they, won't they situation. Now, scrotal recall, if I recall, went three seasons. Maybe it was four. But it did finish open-ended. Right, because there was meant to be another season and it just never happened. So this is kind of, you know, that distant continuation. Kind of, in a way. Not really, but you see what I'm saying. But yeah, I think that one, there was more to kind of string out the situation. Right, because the whole mission state was, um, I forget his name now, but he, was it Matt? Maybe Matt, but he was trying to find a one. So he was looking at a lot of past relationships. So you have that to be able to flesh things out. But with Still Up, 
how do you prolong this story? So unless there's a plan for a two season run, right? And season two, we then conclude with however you want to conclude it. But yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see where this potentially goes, right? It's very enjoyable. Right? It is very enjoyable. There's plenty of moments that make you chuckle. I don't know if they make you outright belly laugh, but they make you smile and they make you chuckle, right? You have a familiarity with the characters. You feel that you know these people. You've run across these people in your life, which I think is very endearing, you know, so, and it's very well written, right? As I said, the chemistry is very good. The interactions work, right? The dialogue, even, you know, Catman, right? And uh, Daphne Mornay dies, right? And, I, and you interrupted our minute silence, right? Just the goofy shit still feels like it fits, right? So this is a, it's, it's not offensive. It's real nice. It's a nice show. So I think you definitely want to see another season, right? You want to see another season. But what do they do, right? What do they do and where do they go? Because I don't think you can stretch this out too much. Right now, obviously, there's a Danny Amy situation, which you could then go with that, right? And it's kind of like two people, maybe they could be together, but every time one's with someone else, you're right. I mean, I mean we've seen that. But it can, that that situation can work. We can do interesting things, fun things. But it's, yeah, where do we go? What do we do? How do we progress this? I'm not sure, people. I'm not sure. But I do want to see a season two. I definitely want to see a season two. But, yeah, everything then lies on that right? Whether we want to see more or whether it's just two and done. You know what I mean? Like The Office, right? English Office, two and done, Christmas special, perfect. And I think if Still Up can follow a similar model, right? Doesn't outstay its welcome. I think this will be a great show. So yeah, people, enjoy episode eight.